And actually, to close up on this and move on to Article 3, which is Blooming Bioplastics. It's a partnership between EPFL and a company called Bloom Biorenewables. Um, and what they've done is they found a way to replace plastics that are based on petroleum, fossil fuels, with an environmentally friendly alternative, which is basically getting this plastic out of plants. Cool. Um, and I think this is super interesting because we focus on phasing out fossil fuels in terms of our energy consumption, right? Use like green energy or in terms of our transportation, you know, bike to work, walk to work, take mass transportation, buy an electric vehicle. But we don't really focus on how it's also in our consumer products. Plastic is everywhere. And there's a ton of other consumer products that are also based on fossil fuels. Well, uh, so, so the one consumer product that comes to my mind outside of plastics that we derive from petroleum is petroleum jelly. So like Vaseline, right? But is there is there like any big ones that I'm missing? That's like only the tip of the iceberg, man. Um, <laughs> almost all of like colognes and perfumes are petroleum based. Really? Um, and like we said, plastics, plastic packaging, like this plastic water bottle here, all of that's based on petroleum. Um, also, another thing that I really like kind of struck me as odd and I found it hard to believe, but, um, most flavorings are also based on petroleum. So like vanilla extract that has petroleum in it. Really? Yeah. I thought that was like alcohol would like use vanilla, vanilla pods in it. I think like, however they formulate the vanilla and like requires some derivative from petroleum, but interesting. So basically all that much to say, Huh. petroleum fossil fuels is everywhere and everything that we use as consumers and it makes up still like a massive percent i think almost 10 percent um, of the amount of co2 that we emit every year so it's it's wow. another big thing that we should be focusing on in addition to our energy and our transportation as far as reducing our carbon footprints i didn't know it was that big yeah and so what's really unique about this one with bloom is that if i were a manufacturer today that uses plastics I kind of have two options to try to, you know, get rid of fossil fuels. And none of them are great for me as a plastics manufacturer. The first one is trying to recapture carbon from the atmosphere in the form of CO2 and break it down and get the carbon from it and turn that carbon into plastics. So I, isn't that what, uh, was it episode two? Uh, yeah, yeah we were talking episode about episode two. Yeah, it was Boom Supersonic. They were doing it with Prometheus fuels. They were trying to get the uh, carbon sequestration, right? carbon out of the atmosphere so exactly it worked well for their application but i'm assuming is it cost that's not the uh that's not in favor of plastic manufacturers here with yeah. that route yeah that's exactly it so jet fuel is already pretty expensive so for them to get an expensive alternative didn't really matter that much gotcha. but the reason why plastics are ubiquitous everywhere is because they're so cheap um and right so to replace plastic with a really, really expensive alternative, not really viable. The other option that I mentioned is extracting carbon from biomass, um, so which can, actually, like, bioplants are, or biomass is plants, it's living things, um, but it actually doesn't make plastic. So that's, like, not an option as well. They, extracting from plants and biomass, they can only use about 40% of the weight of it. And that's called cellulose. And they use cellulose to make paper and they use cellulose to make alcohol and they can't make plastic with it. So it's like really me as Mr. Responsible Plastics Manufacturer that wants to switch to non-fossil fuels. I don't have any options right now. I'm tapped out. And that's why every plastic we see everywhere is based on fossil fuels. Um, so the other 60% that's left from the biomass. Do, right what do they now do it gets it? thrown out. Um, Wonderful. And, yeah, so that's that's not encouraging to hear. But the important thing to note about that is, like, of that 60% that's thrown out, about two-thirds of that, Bloom has found a secret way um, to basically make use of that. So of the 60% that we throw away, two-thirds of that they found out to keep. So if you're keeping score, um, right now we can keep about 40% of plants and use it, and we throw away 60 Using Bloom's method in the future, we can keep almost 80% of it. So they've almost doubled the efficiency here. And the way that that works is they basically add uh, an uh, extra chemical uh, called an aldehyde that keeps those extra parts from breaking down that we'd usually throw away. And okay. we get two main derivatives from that. One of them is called hemicellulose, which we can use to make plastic, which is like 
solves the main problem here as far as consumer products go. They also have this other thing called lignin, which can be used to um, basically replace those things that we were talking about with perfumes, colognes, and flavorings. It's an alcohol alternative that's der derived from this lignin. Interesting. All right, so real quick, going back to the hemicellulose yeah. plastic, does that have similar performance as like the plastics we use on a day-to-day -day basis now? Yeah, well, that's that's actually what's really important about this hemicellulose plastic is a lot of the plant-based plastics that exist today are based on alginate, which is seaweed. They're great, um, they're sustainable, but they just aren't that strong. And for me as a plastics manufacturer, I don't wanna have to use twice the amount of material just because it's not strong enough. Um, this hemicellulose plastic is actually almost just as strong, if not better than existing plastics. So that's a great plus one in their corner in terms of using switching over to a plant-based plastic. All right. You almost have me sold here. Um, <laughs> the, the, the thing that I'm concerned about, right? I, I know this is a big issue in the United States. I, I pick up a bottle. On the back of it, it says recyclable. I put it in the recycling bin, and it ends up in, in like, uh, what's it called? Just normal waste anyways. Yeah, in a landfill. In a landfill, right? Because we don't have the facilities to take care of that. Yeah. Will this plastic, this new uh, bioplastic, suffer the same fate? Well, I'll, I'll give you two reasons why it's great. Um, okay. And the first is that it's also recyclable. So if at some point the United States gets our act together and we grow the infrastructure to be able to recycle stuff like other company, like other countries do, um, this plastic can get heaped in with the rest of them and be recycled using the same processes. So that's great. But it doesn't solve the problem in the short term like you were talking about where you put it in the recycle bin, the infrastructure doesn't exist, and someone throws it in a landfill anyway. Um the reason that hemicellulose is great for that is it's actually also biodegradable and compostable. So, um, you know, the plastic bottle that you get from the store, you can compost in your backyard. And if you put it in the recycle bin and the recycling company is irresponsible and puts it in the landfill anyway, it'll break down instead of sitting there and becoming litter. Okay, that's actually really cool. Yeah, so there's basically, as far as I can tell, this is a huge breakthrough in terms of replacing plastics with something based on plants um, instead of... Uh, using fossil fuels, which plants grow and die already on their own. And we're not messing up any ecological cycles by taking dead plants and extracting things from them. So that's great. Um, and I actually think this is kind of an important point to drive home, especially for myself, but also for our listeners. Um, like I mentioned, we're always focused on reducing our carbon footprint in terms of our transportation, in terms of our energy. I'd like to also focus on reducing my carbon footprint in terms of the consumer products that I use. And personally, as a consumer, I'd be really happy to use a Bloom bioplastic. Um, just a note that I didn't know before this episode, but I picked up during my research, I think it's pretty important to share, is that for every one kilogram of plastic you use, or every one pound of plastic you use, six times that amount of mass is in carbon dioxide in the air. So, you know, the plastic bottle wow. that's sitting on my desk... Um, wow. There's six times that much mass in the air of carbon dioxide that was emitted during the process. That really puts things into perspective. I, I mean, I'm looking around my room right now and wow, I can't, I can't imagine how much I've been causing. Every time I go to Trader Joe's, everything I buy is packaged in disposable plastics. So that, yeah. I feel like that's a great note, by the way, to wrap up this episode. A I good agree. call so to action. Take it to heart. Take it to Focus heart. Focus on our carbon footprint in all aspects of our lives.